Well, good evening to each and every one of you. A very warm welcome to today's episode of Virtual Church. You're all very welcome. It's great to be here once again on this day where we celebrate the Holy Spirit, Pentecost. The first hymn of the plain song, Veni Creator, Come Holy Ghost, our souls inspire. <clears throat> it starts today's virtual church and it will also end today's virtual church. We will end with um, one of the great organ pieces based on that plain song. It's the Jerufle choral variations played live um, based on Veni Creator. But before we get there, we've got a whole bunch of wonderful hymns to get through. Most of the pre-requests are um, Pentecostal, uh, but then we have a top five as well, and then we have your live requests. So live requests, please leave me a super chat uh, for any amount that you'd like. It could be anything. It just highlights it and then makes it easy to capture. So let's crack on with our hymns now. So another wonderful hymn appropriate for today is uh, Down Ampany. Come down, O love divine, seek thou this soul of mine. And finally, it goes a little bit like this.
So that was, uh, come down, O love divine, seek thou this soul of mine to the wonderful tune uh, by Vaughan Williams, down Ampney, it's called. So another hymn that um, we're going to have right now is, and this one actually hasn't been requested. Actually, I should, I should say that the, the, these hymns that I'm playing right now haven't been requested. I'm just popping them in because they are really good hymns and they're relevant for today. There's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in his justice, which is more than liberty. There is no place where earth's sorrows are more felt than up in heaven. There is no place where earth's failings have such kindly judgment given. Yes, three verses, and then they repeat. So verse four is actually a shorter verse. As an organist, these are the sort of things you need to be aware of, because they can very, very easily catch you out. How are you all? Have you let me know how you are? If you are um, new, please do introduce yourselves as, hello, I'm new, or something like that. Please do um, just give me your location and a plus one, plus one in your, in your location so I can see who I've got in with me. I love knowing, because you can see me but I can't see you. I can just see the text on the screen. There's a wideness in God's mercy. Let's have a go with the horn. There aren't many organs where you can actually say that, to be honest. But because not many organs have and horn. <laughs> Let's have a listen to it then.
wonderful tune, isn't it? Corvedale there by Maurice Bevan. There's a wideness in God's mercy. I had that this morning at Romsey, which is why it reminded me, I thought, I know someone who'd like that hymn, the BIS crowd. Did you like it? Did you think, is, it, is, it, is that a good hymn? Is that well known over in the States? Is that, if, if that, let's go wider, is that known anywhere else outside of the UK? It's well known here, it's becoming more and more well known. Only really fairly recently written, I mean, Maurice Bevan died in 2006. The other tune which um, is, is often sung to those words is Cross of Jesus, the Stainer. Um, but that's sung to a lot of things, isn't it? And this, um, this tune, I think presumably was written for these words, which is why it fits so nicely. Yeah, so Doug Alderdice has just said that the text is familiar, but the tune not so much. That's interesting. Okay. Anyone else outside of the UK not know it? Right, let's go into uh, another hymn now, which actually is a uh, real request from one of our regulars, Carmen. Carmen um, is probably our most prolific requester of hymns, aren't you, Carmen? Carmen. I want to know, is that your real name? Or is that a screen name? You don't need to tell me that, it's, that's up to you. But Carmen has asked for, um, he's asked for two hymns tonight, but we'll have one later on. My Jesus, I love thee. Um, I know thou art mine, for thee all the fol follies of sin I resign. So Carmen, if you are there, I know you are around somewhere, please do say hello, I'm talking to you. Um, also, Carmen, you need to get better at putting in the correct hymn number in the BIS request form. You can't just put question marks, all right? It makes it very challenging for me to find them, particularly if they're not on the website. So, if you can just put a hymn number, please, a hymn book and a um, hymn number, that would be terrific. It is your real name. Well, that's good to know. Carmen R. Foster at your service. No, that's me. That's my job. I'm at your service. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. That's why you sponsor me and support me, isn't it? All right, so the tune here is called Gordon. And this is not well known to me at all. So let's, let's, let's use the mutations down in the lower manual. The positive. The solo out the tune just to give us a hope. Uh, a chance to be able to learn the tune before we sing it. Yeah, let's have a four foot on as well. For good measure. Okay, let's go.
Thank you very much, Carmen, for sending that one through. Uh, that was My Jesus, I Love Thee to the tune Gordon. Not known to me. Now, talking about not known to me, this next hymn isn't known to me, but I thought I would do it. Now, people over here in my country, where I am currently residing, you'll have to just go with me on this one. You'll have to open your ears to something new because I can tell you guys over in America and elsewhere, the Netherlands, etc. When I say the following words to the next hymn, people here in England will immediately think of certain tunes. I think I'm thinking of two tunes particularly, but it looks as though when I was looking earlier on Hymnary, the website, when searching for this hymn, because it is, it's a really good hymn for Pentecost. Um, it looks so. This is actually a really popular and common tune in American hymn books. So I thought, yeah, let's give this a whirl today. So, guys, here in England, breathe on me, breath of God. All right, I, I know the tunes you're thinking of, but let's have a listen to this one. This is called Trent, Trentham or Trentham. Um, actually, there's a bit of text underneath it. It says, in, in both Hebrew and Greek, the words for spirit uh, can equally well be translated as breath or wind. So it is very appropriate to address the Holy Spirit as the breath of God. Uh, this tune by an English organist has become the customary one in North American hymnals. There you go. So there is actually a bit of a, a connection between um, you guys and us on the other side of the pond. So let's have a listen to this tune and let's see how it, how it, well, how it compares really. I see how we'll see what it's like. I haven't played it through because I like to hear things for the first time with you guys. Where's my mutation? I haven't got my mutation set up on my piston. It's daft, isn't it? It should be that one really. I need, I need another piston on the choir. I need 10 pistons like Liverpool. <laughs> Uh, all right, so it's a nice little tune by the looks of it, quite short and straightforward, and let's have a listen to it.
very interesting that actually it's more well known than I th was giving it credit for, particularly in Scotland and Baptist churches, as Mance Mouse has just said. A lot of people saying that it is um, a tune that they know, so that's that's lovely to play tunes that you know, but I don't know. Matt's music and adventures. Hi, Matt. Says, I've done this hymn. Nice B flat minor chord in there. <laughs> yeah, it's that it's that passing though, isn't it? Yeah. basically a cheeky accidental to add a little bit of colour. Okay, let's, 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 let's now bring up some of the, um, the artillery <laughs> with um, a Worship the King or Glorious Above. Apologies for um, the late start tonight and, and last week. Um, so we don't worry, we're not, we're not um, starting BC at 8.30 or we're not putting it back half an hour. Uh, this evening I was playing in Romsey Abbey again for Evensong and normally I'm able to slip off uh, halfway through the service, just before the sermon. To come and do this, specifically to come and do this, they've given me permission to do that, so I'm very grateful for them to do it, uh, doing that. But there was a, a visiting choir there tonight, so I was able not able to sneak off because I had to play for the whole thing. Uh, and last week it was our first Sunday night, our first Sunday evening virtual church with two children. And um, just thought I'd give it an extra half an hour to help get Hugo settled for bed. But tonight seems to be quite quiet out there. So, touch wood. Things are going to be okay. Okay, so, O oh, worship the King, all oh, glorious above, O oh, gratefully sing God's power and love, our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendour and girded with praise. Okay, the tune is called Hanover, the music is by William Croft. And just a quick note to my producer tonight. Um, it was the very first hymn that I played, the plain song.
Oh yeah, so apparently my tip jar isn't displayed tonight. Huh. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Why is that then? Let's have a quick look, see if I can get my tip jar on. Um, I quite like my tip jar. It took me a long time to put that together. Let me just... Ah, I well, fancy that. I don't quite know why that's uh, not working. What a shame. Just um, URL. Click, 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 click. OK. Oh, my tip jar. Guys, where's my tip jar? Where's my screen? I just, yeah, I didn't notice. Edit. Let's go to edit. I won't spend too long doing this because I know you find it boring. And it's not really professional. Oh, maybe there's a problem with their website. That's a real shame, isn't it? I'm a tip jar, my animation. Oh, well, we'll have to keep an eye on who's who's uh, donating. I can see that Benjamin Ricks uh, has just super chatted two dollars fifty. So thank you very much, Benjamin. Hmm. Oh yeah, I can't. Th I can't see a reason why that's not working. If I click save. I see what if I if I just do my washing up. If I empty the tip jar, which I actually haven't done from last week anyway. Uh, where is it? Hype cup settings. Uh, uh, huh. uh, it's on. Oh, my tip jar. Guys, I'm really disappointed that my tip jar is not on the screen. Try one more thing. No, it should be there. If I if I just disable that. Yeah. Oh god. Never mind. Never mind. These things happen. Okay, we'll have to do that tips tonight. Uh where's my on the screen? There it is. Greg, thank you. That made me, that, that's made, made me feel a bit better. Thank you very much. <laughs> um Anyway, let's go on. Come Holy Ghost. Lots of lots of um, hymns like this tonight on the Come Holy Ghost, etc. This is one. Um, what? Where is it? A Come Holy Ghost. Uh, maybe just get me a quickly find it. Come Holy Ghost. There we go. Come Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, vouchsafe within our souls to rest. Come with Thy grace and heavenly aid, and fill the hearts which Thou hast made. Tune is called which. People who um, play Bach and listen to Bach will know the tune. Come got chirp for Heiliger Geist. So the tune, wonderful tune. Sound familiar? This uh, particular scan has this down as a serum plane song, um, and it's based on the Veni Creator. It's almost like a monk heard Veni Creator, um, went to the pub, and had some very strong ale, which it was very strong back then. There's evidence of that. Um, tried to remember how it went. Tried to write it down. Couldn't quite get it. He thought, "Oh, no one will know." <laughs> So it goes like this, uh, uh, there was, uh, 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 four verses, there are actually se seven verses here, but I'll give you four verses.
Does anyone know that one? Thank you very much, Christy. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you very much, Carmen and uh, Greg as well for your donations uh, during that hymn. I mean, I'm worried about this. I'd, I don't know why my... Um, I just, can I just try something, guys? Just try something. I go to add in OBS. Add. Um, now what is it? It's a is a browser so add a browser let's just do that yep so you can see that okay you've just added a browser source so this is how you do it um, and what it should be doing at that point even though it's completely the wrong size it should be um, it should be Just go back to that. Aha! I need my. I need. I need oh heavens! Bear with me. Bear with me. This is important to me. This. So three eight. This is a four K resolution. So three eight forty by. Oh, it's going to. The keyboards are the other end of the room. It's annoying. Uh, by what is it? Uh, Two one sixty. Two one sixty. Let's just click OK on that, and then go to transform fit to screen oh my goodness they're all overflowing right so why is that working and then if i go to these ones it's not working i'm gonna to have to do a very quick fix here guys think with a if, could someone just donate <laughs> that one one P or the minimum amount so we can just test it so make sure it comes up on the screen good I'm relieved actually that's bad because I you know I like to do things properly that's a little bit of behind the scenes there of how the streaming software works OBS right so now but look at that tip jar it's massively full as I thought I I did my washing up Maurice I did I did my washing up I clicked it. I clicked wash up earlier. Oh well, wash up with you. Let's go on to um, our um, request, which is coming from Benjamin Yao tonight. He said, he featured this as the opening hymn for a gospel meeting earlier today. It's the gospel of thy grace. I don't know what the tune is called. It doesn't, on this screen, it doesn't seem to have a tune name, but Let's just solo out the um, the tune on uh, trumpet. Brian and Laura, thank you very much. Did it come up on the screen? Did it? I was actually looking down. I wasn't even ready. Uh, come on, come on, work. Let's just see. I'll keep an eye on it. Yes, James, you're on the screen right now. Brilliant. Crash. Thank you very much, guys. Let's crack on now. Ba business as usual, or B A U, as I say in the industry. B A U. Business as usual. Uh, where do we go? Let's go on this one.
I love all of those very cheeky. Um, what would you call them? I suppose. Those, those pack, the pa accented passing notes, I think they're, they're called. I don't know, do they have a proper name? I don't know. Um, ben, hope that was all right for you. Didn't know that. There's a tune by James um, uh, McGranahan. I might just give you some more words to that, actually. The gospel of thy grace, my stubborn heart has won. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. That whatsoever will believe shall everlasting life receive. Shall everlasting life receive. It was repeated. I wasn't just repeating myself. The James Forsyth sent uh, a request through. And he says, um, special patron hymn request. So hello, hello, James. Thank you for your patronage. He says, I recently heard this tune for this hymn and thought it might be of interest. Other great tunes available, but thought as this might be worth introducing to you. Well, let's have a list. Let's have a um, let's have a look, shall we? At it. So it's it's really good because it's um it's on the Pentecostal theme. It's O bread of life, come sweeping through us, revive your church with life and power. O breath of life, come cleanse, renew us, and fit your church to meet. His uh, meet this hour. Uh, the tune is called Sunset. I don't know who the tune is by. Oh, I do. It's right at the bottom there. It's by George Gilbert Stocks. And apparently it's copyright to the governors of Repton School in Derbyshire. Um, in case you wanted to know that. <laughs> they wanted you to know that. <laughs> um, and it's, I just think common praise. It looks like this is a common praise scan. It's common praise, Jim. Um, let's have a look then. Don't know it. Doesn't mean you won't. You might. I have a very discerning congregation. Do you think, like, collectively, we and you, we're we're knowledgeable, aren't we? We know a lot of stuff between us. We could we could win a pub quiz with hymns. I'm sure we we would win if so. Two hundred and fifty people watching thereabouts. Collectively, that's a lot of knowledge. We would thrash anyone at a pub quiz with hymns, wouldn't we? Wouldn't we? I think we would. Maybe we should put that to a test. We need to do another quiz, by the way, don't we? Because we used to do a few quizzes, but we haven't done one for a while. Anyway, let's have a listen to this hymn before we get too bogged down in pubs.
No, it's a, uh, yeah, did, did anybody in the chat know that? Apart from James Forsyth who requested it. Can't see anyone saying that they knew it. Uh, people saying it's new to them. Joe says it's a new hymn to me and a lovely one. Carmen, they're not familiar with this one. Um, Nick Knack knows the words but not the tune. Uh, Donna, not heard this one before. Daniel doesn't know it either. There we go. But it, it is lovely, isn't it? So actually, this is the. Ch Let me just play you the tunes once more. We can enjoy it. At least one person who doesn't like it. <laughs> Alan, that's all right. Um, so the words. Okay, fair enough. So Fitz and Clement. So the words are by Elizabeth Ann Head. <clears throat> I wonder what else she's written. I don't know what any of her other work, 1850 to 1936. Okay, so only a couple more hymns to go before we get into our top five tonight which comes from the Netherlands. Um, so I'm looking forward to this one. We've got um, Ben van Elderen, who's sent in a top five, and I'm very happy to play it. He's written, he's written quite a, um, a detailed account of why he's chosen each one. So we'll look forward to that later on. I've got just a couple more to go before we get there. And then we get into your live requests after that. Please do keep your live requests coming as it's uh, for hymns or organ music. It really brings v uh, BIS and VC to life. And it keeps me employed, basically. So <laughs> any help is appreciated. Um, it's a quick shout out, actually, to, to all of you Patreons, all of you channel members, so people who are typing if you, if those people who have a green name, your channel members, you are a channel member, I really appreciate your support, your financial support um, on a weekly, monthly basis. It does mean a lot and it's really helpful. Yay. <laughs> I do sometimes have sleepless nights about how, you know, we're going to keep things going, but I think we're doing pretty well. But just your, your support does, does really help. Carmen has sent in another request for My Hope is built on nothing, uh, nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. The refrain goes like this, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Uh, to the tune, solid rock. Okay. Let's have a go.
I have an extremely dirty glasses lens on the left hand side. Well, that might be a bit better. There we go. You can see me and I can see you now. <laughs> I can, I can see you in there. I can just about see you. If I look hard enough, I can just see you. Oh, you're a good looking bunch. You are, you're a good looking bunch, especially you over there in the corner. Not sure about you. <laughs> right, filled with the spirit's power um, is one that I came across actually today whilst browsing around on the hymnary. Um, and I thought, I didn't recognize this, but the words are by um, Cyril Taylor, well-known uh, hymn writer. Filled with the spirit's power, with one accord, the infant church confessed its risen Lord. O oh, Holy Spirit in the church today, and um, again your power of fellowship display to the tune Sheldonian. Um, music is by Cyril Taylor. So the music, I said words, I meant music by Cyril Taylor um, of fame. And the words are by J.R.P.C. And I think I thought it looked rather nice, so I thought I, we, I would try it out with you to see how we get on with it. If it's a clangor, then we, we won't have it again. But I don't, think, I don't think it will be a clangor. I think it'll be a hit. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down to this tune. Good to see a thumbs up. I just wonder whether the people who wanted to give a thumbs down were just a little bit shy about doing so. <laughs> but yeah, people are giving, giving that one a thumbs up. I would give it a thumbs up as well. It's good, isn't it? It's not as uh, catchy as some of the other ones, but I think it's rather nice. It has a nice sort of flowing feel about it and a, quite a good bass line, a walking bass line actually, where the bass line is very in integral to the music. Right, so final hymn before we get into Ben's top five. I thought I would save this one to the very end of this section simply because it's a it's a sort of a um, it's a finale, a finale basically. It's it's um, a really good one. You'll all know this, I'm sure. If I ask you to give me a thumbs up or thumbs down for this one, you'll have to. Um, I'd be very surprised if anyone gives me a thumbs down, but you might give me a thumbs down because you've heard it lots. That's a good reason to give it a thumbs down. 
some people don't like Handel's Messiah because it's overplayed, overdone, they hear it too many times. I personally give it a massive thumbs up because I think it's one of the greatest pieces of classical music ever written. It is done a lot, but that's simply because it's just so good. So this next hymn, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Brady Kilman says, I really want to hear this hymn at full organ or what I like to call loud as heck. <laughs> give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down whether you think this hymn is worthy of mm, a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Ready guys, you go for it. I saw all those thumbs up and I thought, do you know what, I'll, I will play as loud as heck. <laughs> I hope that was loud enough for you, Brady. Are you in the chat? I can't see you chatting away, but I've seen you around before. I hope that was all right for you. I tell you what, this, this, as I was playing that, I was just, the organ of Westminster Abbey came to mind. Because... That, 
sorry, wait for the acoustic to die away. That organ has really quite outrageous chamades on the top manual and tubers and massive, a uh, massive string department. And I think if any organ was to rival the organ of Westminster Abbey, it has to be this one. It really does just have a very similar character to that. Does anyone agree with me? Um, and people who know the, the Abbey organ, do you agree with that? I think that, that I think that's this is quite a good contender. The Abbey organ is bigger actually than than the Doodle Um It has it's much, a much more comprehensive. Um, the Great's probably the similar sort of size. The choir is bigger at, at the Abbey, um, and the pedal I think is probably a bit, a bit bigger. And then it has a solo section with um, the, 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 the traditional English reeds, you know, like um, an orchestral oboe, a clarinet. Um, and it's got a horn, it has got a horn, uh, an enclosed horn, so a very different character to this one actually. Um, but anyway, so uh, Clay says that the, Ro the Royal Albert Hall organ has one of um, my favourite reeds, the festival trumpets. Yeah, they are quite uh, something, aren't they? Bill says Westminster has better reeds. Yeah, well, don't forget, Bill, that in the Abbey you actually, you, you're in the acoustic and you hear the organ from quite a distance away. I suppose with this, and I, I know exactly, I, I agree actually with what you're saying, these reeds are quite in your face. These swell reeds are massive. They are quite snarly, but don't forget these, these reeds are voiced in the Kvaikol uh, fashion. Um, but if, I, I guess if you were to hear this organ in the building, they might sound a little softer, but with headphones on our speakers, you are hearing quite a close sound. So they, they do snarl, but I, I love them. I absolutely love them. Right, top five time. Comes in from a young chap from the Netherlands who goes by the name of Ben van Elderen. His brother Tim is also in. Uh, Tim chats quite a bit. I'm not, I've not seen Ben chatting away yet, or maybe he has been, I don't know. Then if you're in, hello. He says, um, hereby my top five hymns. Um, he says, um, I really enjoy watching the VC uh, and I'm sad I can't watch every day or every week, I guess, but now he's doing his A-levels. Oh, but now my A-levels are over. I'll be able to watch live more often. Well, that's good. Hello, Ben, you are in. Just want to remember, Erin, I think I saw your name. Are your A-levels over yet? Because I think we need to be getting in touch, don't we, about you know what. Um, so yes, are your A-levels over? So he starts at number five. Let me just get it up on the iPad ready. Now, Ben is going to have to put the words in the chat because I don't have the words to hand um, for this one, it's a Dutch tune, and it's it's um, handwritten, and it's actually uh, it's Psalm 42, because over in the Netherlands they actually really like to improvise and write music based on the Psalms, which is, I get that, I really understand why you would do that, because the words of the Psalms are are, are full of um, drama and stories. Um, even just taking a couple of verses of a psalm is enough to write an entire um, sonata. Just, just like Roebke did with the 94th psalm. He took a few verses of, of Psalm 94 and wrote a, a monumental organ uh, piece, Rhapsody, on it. It's called an organ sonata. Anyway, he says, I would like to start my top five with this um, um, with this, here, uh, with this psalm. Is it Genevan or Genevan psalm? In Dutch Protestant churches, we sing both songs uh, out of our hymnal. Um, the lead book, De Kirken, uh, which shares a lot of similarity with the NEH and psalms from the um, Genevan Psalter. Um, I must say that in our church, with the absence of an organ, we do not sing these uh, very often. The congregation there, and my parents included, uh, though they do not mind organ, like the newer stuff better. I do not. 
Hence, I, listen, I, I often listen to psalm variations on YouTube. I think it's a real shame that these wonderful pieces of music are omitted from our services. And when I have more, um, and, and when I will have to, uh, hang on. Oh, and when I will have to move in September as I go to university, um, I will look for a local church where um, there'll be a lovely organ and they play and sing psalms occasionally. Attached um, is a link to this to my favourite student even psalm, Psalm 42. I love both the flowing tune and the text which makes use of the, um, um, the similarity between one's soul and a deer panting for water. Yes, so Psalm 42 as we as we most of us will know it's like as the heart desireth the water brooks so long hath my soul after thee O God. So should we have this in E flat or in F? Let's have it, let's have it in, in F. I don't have the words Ben so I'll, I will just play it I will play it through twice okay I hope I hope I get this right in the way I'll do it. I'll keep it fairly soft, I think. Okay, let's have a go.
we'll have to see that. Um, I think, yeah. Ben, you put some of the text in the chat, did you? Yeah, you did. Good. I think that was quite a, a well-known um, hymn tune as well. Lovely. So what's the tune known? Uh, what's it, what is the tune called? Uh, is, is it just, it's not just called Psalm 42, is it? Oh, there we go. Um, some some Bala has just written it. Freudich sehr, O mein Zeele. Rejoice, O my soul. There we go. Apologies for repeating one of the lines there. I, that one of the hazards of using um, a scan like this, where you have to where you have to scroll the music, is if you if you scroll and you take your eye away from the music, of course you don't know which line you were just on because it's been it's scrolling. So that's what happened there. Lovely start into this top five, Ben. Thank you very much. Into number four now. Number four of uh, five. This is a really well-known tune. This basically needs no introduction at all as to what this tune is. But, of course, what we do want to know is why Ben has chosen it. He says, I am doing a project about organs. Um, I believe that... Uh, one will learn more about this um, in the future, but I'm going to keep it a secret for now. Your secret is safe with me, unless it is the same secret. Anyway, as a project leader, I had the opportunity to play on the lovely Bats organ uh, in the second oldest Protestant church in the Netherlands, which is about 20 minutes uh, bike ride from my home. Yes, I'm afraid the cliche of bike riding in the Netherlands is true, I'm afraid. Well, that's fine, because I've just bought a bike, an electric bike, and I'm absolutely loving every single minute of it. I love it. I can't get on it enough. In fact, I've bought um, a trailer for Hugo to get in as well. So Hugo and I can go out on the bike, me on the bike and him in the trailer, in, the, in, the, in this glorious weather, and have a wonderful time. So I, I, I get it. I that. I, I'm really into that. I'm really into that. The organ is built by a serious organ builder who did, for instance, the Cathedral of uh, Groningen. This organ, or Silverman, isn't it? This organ, however, only has 11 stops and no separate pedal division. Um, it, it is fully mechanical with two manuals. It does, however, have a trumpet. Um, However, when you pull out the trumpet, you only hear it because it's right above your head and it is really loud. <laughs> uh, where are we going with this? Um, da -da -da. Ah, so he said he was playing, playing the organ in the church, um, and then he, he was built. He was building up two verses. Uh, using all the stops until the last verse where you pulled on the trumpet right above your head, it deafened you, a magnificent f sound filled this small church. The hymn that I was playing, Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, be all else but naught to me, save that thou art. To the magnificent tune, Slain. Yay, one of my favourites.
great tune, doesn't it? A great tune. It's one of the great hymns. Number three in Ben's list. That was number four, taking us into number three. Again, a virtually a really well-known tune. So even though Ben is Dutch um, and just finishes A-levels, so it's 17 or 18, um, really good English, well well written here. So well written. I wouldn't like to write in another language and then have it read out online. So you're very brave and you've done very well. The first time I heard Jerusalem was in a video, um, a recording of the uh, uh, presumably the, the last night of the proms. I was astonished by the thousands of people singing it. It is quite a thing, I tell you. Um, that is a sense of unity, I believe, only the British possess. Interestingly, I would later study Blake's poetry in my English language and literature class. He was sure a character. He sure was a character, and so was his poetry. Anyway, I really enjoy Parry's setting of the words, and my past interpretation. So I hope you can do that once more. Smiley face. <laughs> well, that's very kind of you to say that. I'm glad you like my interpretations. They're never quite the same, are they? That's a, that is the problem. I don't know whether that's a problem. I keep it fresh, I guess. Now, I do have, and I, I will record this, I do have a really good arrangement, organ arrangement of this. Um, and I will put it online very soon. It's a really fabulous arrangement by Joseph Wicks. Um, not the fitness instructor, Joseph Wicks, um, who has appeared on BIS before. He's a, he was organ scholar at St John's Cambridge, and he's arranged the orchestral, the orchestral part for um, an, uh, an organ, a solo organ, and it's really good, really, really good. I'll play that. So here is my interpretation of Jerusalem today on Pentecost, the 28th of May, 20. 23. I guarantee next time I play with him, it will be different. But that's the beauty of BIS and the beauty of VC, isn't it? Let's go!
I think I've cheated Ben out of a couple of years, or was that Tim out of a couple of years? Yeah, it's good to have um, young people uh, listening in and uh, joining in the fun. Sean, you could. Why, why could you not ever play it like that? Of course you could. Of course you could. I'm sure you could. You, uh, don't, uh, don't plan it too much. Just have to go with it. Don't, don't think about it too much. Think about, you know, as you're going through, just go with the inspiration. Like the tuba, I don't know where, I don't know where they, that tuba came from, but it just, it just suddenly happened. That was number three in Ben's list, a good list so far. I think you'll all agree. So number two in Ben's list, this is what he says. This hymn starts with a little revelation. Hmm. Well, here, let's uh, find out what the revelation is. When I was around eight years old, we went to a church where we would not sing hymns very often and especially not the old English classics like this one. However, this, sorry, sorry, this, however, was the first real hymn with which I came into contact. Okay. It was played at the Top Gear Grand Tour Funeral for a Ford. I know exactly that what you're talking about now, but I do, I watch, I watch Grand Tour. Even though I did not agree with the slight changes they made to the second word of each verse. <laughs> uh, car fans will know what I mean. It was the first time I heard this lovely hymn on the lovely organ of Lincoln Cathedral. Later on, it will be the first hymn I would ever play on a real pipe organ. Well, so a couple of things there is it's good to know that we've got another Top Gear Grand Tour uh, Jeremy Clarkson fan in with us because I, I do love I, I, I love that and Clarkson's Farm. If you haven't seen Clarkson's Farm, Ben, it, go and watch that. It's hilarious. It's brilliant. It's also also doing a huge amount of positive. Um, good for the world of farming, for a a agricultural work. Uh, and the second thing is, of course, Lincoln Cathedral. I was there recently recording it, and it featured on BIS quite heavily a few uh, over Easter. And what an organ that is. I'd love to go back and record it again. So, dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Reclothe us in our rightful mind, in purer lives thy service find, in deeper reverence praise, in deeper reverence praise. To the tune Repton. This is number two in Ben's list. If this is number two, what on earth could be number one, I wonder? quick tannoy announcement if anyone has access to caroline could you please give her a text and ask her or my father for a quick drink please thank you
obviously no one's no one's listening to me. I might have to go on and get a drink in a sec. Absolutely. You have to wait and see what number one is. I don't know whether you can still hear me, but I'm actually in my kitchen now, pouring myself a drink. There's a, the tap running. There we go. And so it definitely was just water. You could, you could hear it. We haven't got um, gin on tap yet, unfortunately. Mm. There we go extremely hot at all because it's been really hot here down in the south of England and this room gets very hot um, when playing the organ and not as hot I should say as it, the old organ the old organ used to put out a huge amount of heat um, because it had lots of amplifiers in it and all sorts of other old-fashioned uh, technology but the new organ doesn't really have any tech in it at all believe it or not um, it's a glorified MIDI controller. Um, so all of the work is being done in a computer in a cabinet over there, which is still putting out heat. I've got the window open, but it's still very hot in here. Over the summer, when I have guests in here, I bring in the um, mobile air conditioning unit, but that's very noisy. But, oh well, you can't have them all, can you? So number one, number one now in, uh, in Ben's list. This is what he says. This is a hymn I truly love. When I, um, it was the first hymn I really, I really learned to play on the organ. It was one of my brother's sight reading exercises. We were having exams and we came home and had some tea and he sat behind the organ and started to sight read this tune. I immediately loved it and asked what he was playing as I didn't know it. He told me what it was and though I had been playing around some simple tunes with some simple tunes on the organ, this was the first time that I'd ever heard, um, this was the first hymn I learned uh, and, and then many hymns followed on. I usually play this when people are over at our house. Most people love it as it reminds them of loved ones laid to rest. It is always useful to have the tissues at hand when playing this one. Well, it is really a bit of a tearjerker, yes, but um, I think Doug Alderdice and I tend to agree that actually it's a, it's a very positive ending, a, re a really reassuring ending, this hymn. And if you end it on a bright, positive note, quite literally, it becomes more reaffirming and more, it offers more um, consolation, I think, um, than sorrow. It's abide with me, fast falls the even tide. Um, the darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the, help of the helpless, O oh, abide with me. Verse five, the final verse, hold thou thy cross before thy closing eyes, shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. In life in death, O oh Lord, abide with me. So it is, this is number one in Ben's list. It's a great list. And he says at the end, uh, so that was my top five maybe a little bit too much elaboration that doesn't matter anyway once again um, I wish to commend you on the lovely work you do with BC it's very kind um, so by today my exams are over and I will be able to watch virtual church live for almost two to three months yay Ben so it's good to have you in the chat and I look forward to having you for two to three months it's going to have another Look, I, that was full, and I, had, and I had one mouthful and it's gone. Okay, so let's go in with Abide With Me.
wonderful tune called Even Tide.
Yes, that was Abide Abide with Me, Fast Falls the Even Tide. Ending in, in E major, starting in E flat major. For Ben. Ben Van Elderen. So thank you very much, Ben, for that. And I will try to get back to your email very, very um, shortly. Your other email. Fab, well done. So I, I, I have had some top five sent in. Um, so I do have a few to get through. But as always, you are more than welcome to send me through your top fives. The more I receive, the better. The happier it makes me feel. The more confidence it gives me. That V that VC is a um, a long-standing, established thing, and then we can really enjoy it together. We're now going to move into the live requests now. So I'm by myself. Have a look. So I've got James Palmer, who's doing a sterling job, chatting to me in our producer's uh, chat over here on the right. Um, but I've got no one here in here with me tonight. No sign of anyone helping me out. So let's have a look. What have I got to play tonight? What have you guys been requesting? I've got a cheeky request from Natalie Richards, which I have sort of logged for a little bit later on, because um, it's a very cheeky request. Uh, is it on here, actually? Is it on here? I, th I think it's on here. I think it's on the iPad. We could have it now, actually, just to lighten the mood a little bit. So, as I'm in, as I'm in here by myself, um, James, um, could we just? I think you've. So are are the hearts? <laughs> this is this is quite this is quite specific. Bear with me, guys. James, are the hearts the ones that I've got to play? Okay. So whilst you're sort of getting typing and reply to that, I'm going to just play this very cheeky little thing by Noel Rawson. It's called Hornpipe Humor Esque. And what have I got to get on? Eight, four flutes. No, okay, I'm going to get some flutes set up. Um, bits of this are harder than you might think, so it might be a little bit seat of the pants. <laughs> but you're used to that now, aren't you? Aren't you? You've seen me be playing on, on, on live and virtual church for years now. You know it's all seat of the pants. <laughs> Let's have a go for it. So, whilst you're requesting live stuff, I'm going to play this very cheeky number by Noel Rawson. And it's called Hornpipe Humoresque, and it's based on lots of different sort of sea shanty type things. Lots of English, lots of well-known English tunes, and some not English tunes as well. I think the, I, I think you should all write in the write in the chat what the um, what the tunes are as, I, as I'm as I'm playing them. Thank you. 
some tricky bits in that, and actually need to make sure you get your tuber right at the right time. But anyway, that was um, that was in part so, um, all pipe humor esque, and he uh, rather hilariously says all the way through. He says, um, "With apologies to J.S. Park, with apologies to Vivaldi, with apologies to Arn, with apologies to Vidor, and I should add at the end there, with apologies to Noel Rosal." <laughs> Right, so where are we going? So we've had, oh, we've only had three requests tonight, have we? That's because they've had so much already. They don't know what to request. There's a, there's a great hymn for um, the season of Pentecost, which we haven't yet had. Someone could request it. O thou who camest from above. I think that's quite a good Pentecostal hymn. Um, so we've had an email sent through by Benjamin Ricks. Uh, it's Redeemer of Israel, uh, our only delight, on whom for a blessing we call our shadow by day and our pillar by night, our king, our deliverer, our all. Four verses of this because there are, there are six and they're quite long so I'll shorten it just a fraction and give you four verses hey let's go Nice tune, didn't know it. The tune is called. Not sure. And it's by Freeman Lewis. 
I'm not quite sure what the tune was actually called. So I'm going to go into a request which has been sent through by Carmen, I think. Huh? Is, that not the, is that not the same tune that I just played? It's the same tune. What? Why is it sending? Why are you requesting the same tune twice? I'm confused. Why have I been asked to play the same thing twice? Oh, Carmen, was that not what I just played? I thought I just play. I'm so baffled. I'm so baffled. It's, I think Carmen sent it something through earlier, and that's it. It's remarkably similar to what I have just played. It's also by Freeman Lewis. So, same composer, very similar tune, different words though. Do you mind if we don't have that one? Because it was the same. Um, what else have I got to play, James? Oh, someone's requested. Oh, has Josh Wilson made a request tonight? Josh Wilson's apparently made a request somewhere. I miss that. Um, Christ has made the sure foundation to the wonderful tune Westminster Abbey. Christ is made. Christ is made. The sure foundation. It's not in my iPad. Two oh five, I think, isn't it? Peugeot two oh five in the NEH. Yeah, there it is. So uh, I think this one might have come in from. This one might have come in from Josh Wilson. Three verses. Three verses. I've got a piece here to play called Non Nobis Domine by Robert Quilter. Does anyone know that one? Because we're going to have that one in a sec.
there's a great arrangement of that um, used at the coronation, which I really must get my hand my hands on. I think it's available to buy, but I'll have to get that. Let's see if we can get that for next week or for a future virtual church because it, it was um, very exciting, arranged by James O'Donnell. Another request which is coming from Kosh Nanarek, uh, God of our fathers. This is a good um, national hymn over in the States. God, where is it? God of, God of. That, not, that isn't the first line, is it? Uh, what is the first line to that hymn? I need the first line to it. Because arra everything's arranged alphabetically by first, first what to call it? God. I'm just going to put search for God of. God of R. No, I need to know what the first, I need to know what the first, um, the first line is, please. If someone could let me know. You know which hymn I mean, don't you? Um, oh well, Jenny. Well, there's, uh, then in which case it's not in the iPad, unfortunately. Oh rats! Of course it was in the iPad because I've played this numerous times. I tell you what, I'm going to search my email for it because God of R, because I've had this sent through loads of times by people trying to send me the ultimate version of this particular hymn with the little triplets in between each line. Unison triplets. Oh, I tell you what, search, no matter where it is, on whatever platform, always lets me down. It never comes back with what I want. It just, I was searching for God of our, God of our, or God of our, and it kept searching for of, literally searching for of and nothing else. Like, yeah, how many emails do you think it brought back? When it when I searched for the word of, come on Outlook, don't be so stupid, stupid. That looks, that one looks like a terrible arrangement. Uh, getting a bit sick and tired of not being able to find it. Come on, where is it? Good chappy has come to the rescue, even though it's not into the night. I just found an email from him. Right, so, um, God of our fathers, whose almighty hand leads forth in beauty all the starry band of shining worlds in splendor through the skies, our grateful songs before thy throne arise. Trumpets before each stanza. Okay, well, I know you guys stateside like this hymn to be played with much Mm. You know, you know what that means, don't you? Mm. So we'll do it that. Sounds a little bit like this. I hope I get this right this time.
cool. We're getting through these requests now, which is good. So we have um, Abbot's, Lay, Lee, Abbot's Lee coming up. Um, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Some of you might know that. Coming up. And before we get to those, I'm just going to play this piece, which was sent in by uh, a, a listener. Um, here. Non nobis domine. I think this is of a certain generation because I. Robert Roger Quilter is a really wonderful composer. He wrote a lot of beautiful songs. And when I showed this to my mum, she immediately knew it and sang it. Like, so it's, I think it was a, um, a sort of thing that was sung in schools. Now, how am I going to turn this page with a big staple in the corner like that? Just, um, well, I'm not going to be able to do too much with this, I don't think, because it's, it's a piano and organ accompaniment. So you have to accept my apologies for the less than perfect interpretation of this. But non nobis domine, words by uh, Rudyard Kipling and music by Roger Quilter. Non nobis domine, I think. Very catchy tune. Roger Quilter was a really wonderful, wonderfully talented 
at writing um, a tune, wasn't he? He was really gorgeous. He was one of the greats at writing song. Um, so if you if you check out his his songs, sung by sung by all sorts of uh, different voices, different um, you know high voices, low voices, they're gorgeous. All right, so we have two more hymns, and then we're going to have the big voluntary, the Maurice de Rufle, um choral variations on the Veni Creato. So we're going to go in with um, Abbot's Lee first. Maybe it's Abbot's Lay, actually. It should be Lay, I suspect. Um, and then we're going to have the American National Anthem for, for Jenny. And then the Durufle. So, um, oh, let me just... Uh, uh, buh, buh, ot. Abbott, Abbott. Ooh, God. How is it not? It's one eight five in the NEH, isn't it? I'm sure, it's one eight five. I'm not sure what words. Apologies, you wanted, um, but hey ho. Josh, uh, sorry, Kosh is saying the correct hymn was "God of Our Fathers, Known of Old," but. Not this one, sorry. Well, Kosh, I'm afraid. Can you wait until next week? Because I'm actually getting extremely tired. <laughs> this is the thing about having two children and it being 11 o'clock at night. Um, so we'll have it next week, all right? Sing uh, Abbott's Lee for Carmen Foster to whatever words you want.
Okay, so we're going to have one more hymn tonight. Mine eyes have seen the coming of the glory of the Lord. I think I, I'm not quite sure. I think I say this is the American National Anthem earlier. It just goes to show what, what I'm thinking. My brain is mush. Uh, this is the Battle Hymn of the Republic, the Republic, and this has been requested by uh, Jenny. This is our final hymn, and then we're going to go into the organ voluntary straight after this tonight. So I'll see you um, in about maybe seven or eight minutes.
Well, that was a final section of the monumental um, piece, Prelude, Adagio, and Choral Variations on the Veni Creator. Um, so we opened tonight's virtual church with the played song Veni Creator, and then we ended with that monumental piece there by Maurice Giroufle. That does draw a close to tonight's virtual church. Um, thank you all so much for joining me this evening. Thank you all for your company and thank you for your donations. Thank you for sticking with me. And I very much look forward to sharing some more news with you this coming week or at the latest the week after. I've got something brewing in the background which you haven't yet seen, but I've been working very hard at it. It's a shame because I've been working so hard and spending so many hours doing it, but I haven't been able to share it yet. But I'll, I'll bring you into the secret very soon. If you've enjoyed tonight's virtual church, please do click the like button if you haven't already. And I would really appreciate it if you actually leave me a comment on the video as well, because I do see and read every single comment that ever gets left on any of my videos. I read them all. and I, I always click like on the comment so if you get a notification saying someone's clicked like, it's often me. And if it warrants it, I'll give it a heart as well, if it's a positive comment. So until next week, I will say thank you for joining me, uh, but I will say a good night, a cheerio, and you all stay safe. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.